Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about how to deal with dates in Python. Now, in the last two lessons, we learned a variety of methods for dealing with text data and numeric data, but many data sets also contain dates that don't fit nicely into either category. Common date formats can include both numbers and text to specify months and days. Getting dates into a friendly format and extracting some features from dates, like the month or year, to create new variables are common data preprocessing steps. I prepared some fake date data to use in this lesson, so let's go ahead and load in some packages and then read that data set and just look at what some different date formats might look like. So you can see in this data set, I've made four different date columns that are in different formats. So we have one that is the month, day, year, day, month, year, a date time format where the day and month are actually written out as abbreviations and there's a time associated with it. And then a year, month, day format. Now, when you read dates into pandas, it will typically be read in as a string because while they do contain numbers most of the time, they also have other characters that so they'll usually be loaded in as a string by default. So let's go ahead and check the types of these columns to confirm that that is the case. So if we check the types of each of these columns, pandas read them all in as class string. Now the pandas library comes with a timestamp data object for storing and working with dates. And when you read data into pandas, using the reading functions we learned about, you can actually specify whether a particular column is a date, and then you can have it read it in as a timestamp object instead of as a string. To do that, you add an additional parse dates argument when you read in the data. So we'll show how to do that below. So here we're going to reread in the data using pd.readcsv again. And this time we're going to have an extra argument after specifying the file path that we're reading, we're going to say comma, we also want to do parse dates, and we set that equal to a list that indicate which columns contain dates. Now, this data set that I made for this lesson is kind of special because all of the columns are actually dates. So here we're going to say columns 0, 1, 2, and 3. We all we want to convert all of those to timestamp. But, but in general, you'll probably only have maybe one or two columns that actually have dates in them. So you just pass in whatever index would be associated with that column. But when we run this, we will resave the dates and let's run our type loop again here. And we can see that now all four of those date columns are stored as timestamp objects instead of strings. Note that the pandas date parser was able to turn all of those different date formats that we had into timestamp objects it will do its best to parse whatever date time format you have and turn it into a timestamp. But if you have a date that is in an odd format that is not very common, the conversion might not work and you might have to specify specifically what your date time format is in order to get it to convert into a timestamp. So I'll show an example of a date time format here that might not work in the default date time parser. Here we have the time first, then a space, then a year, day, month. This is something that is perhaps not very common and the standard parser that turns things into timestamps might not work on this. If you encounter something like this that is not able to be parsed and turned into a timestamp by the default loader function, you can use this other pandas function pd.toDateTime, and you can run that on oddly formatted dates and then specify exactly what the format is. And by specifying precisely what your format of your date is, it will be able to convert that into a timestamp. So I'll give an example of doing that on this somewhat odd date construction here. So we're going to say pd.toDateTime, so that's we want to convert to date time. The first thing we pass in is what we're converting. We're going to pass in that odd date that we had above. And then we want to specify the format of the odd date as the next argument. So we're going to say format equals, 
and then we pass in a string that specifies the format. You specify the format using some special date time formatting codes. So I'll walk you through what this is actually saying here. This first percent H here means the hour that matches the hour in our date up here. Then we have a colon that just matches the colon. Percent M means the minute. So that is matching this. Then we have another colon to match that. We have percent capital S to match the seconds. Then we have a space because we have a space here. Then we have percent Y, which matches the full year. The hyphen matches the hyphen. We have percent lowercase d that matches the numerical day, which is that. Then we have a hyphen to match the hyphen. And finally, we have percent lowercase m, which matches the month. So by passing this whole string in here as the format with these special date time matching codes, that should precisely match this odd date, which will allow this pd.toDateTime function to turn it into a timestamp. So when we run that, we can see that it has been turned into a timestamp object and the data has been rearranged in order to conform to the timestamp. Now, depending on the format of the odd dates you're trying to convert, you might need some special date codes other than the ones I have listed here. In the pandas documentation, you can find a list of some of the common date time abbreviations you can use. For instance, percent capital A is the full weekday name. So if you had a date time where they are writing out full weekdays like Saturday, Sunday, etc., you would need to use percent A. And there's just a whole bunch of different special codes like that listed here. So I will leave a link in the description of the video to this page that shows most of these common date time format codes and what they do. Once you have a column in a date time format, you can use pandas to extract a variety of specific variables or features from the date time object, perhaps into other columns. So say you wanted to extract the year, the month, the day, or other things like that into their own individual columns instead of having them within the date time column itself. You can do that in pandas by taking the name of the column or series that is the date time object, then saying dot DT for date time and then dot whatever the attribute you want to extract is. So we'll show a bunch of the different attributes that you can extract from a date time object and make a new data frame out of it. So here we're going to say column one is going to be the first column of our date. So we'll just use that for this example. And we're going to extract a bunch of different features from it. So we're going to say we're going to make a new data frame pd.dataframe and we're going to put some different columns in it based on the different information we're going to take out of the date time object. So the first column we're going to set to the year. And to get that, we just say the name of our column.dt.year. We're going to get the month. That's the column.dt.month. The day, dt.day. The hour you can get, dt.hour. You can also get the day of the year. That's dot day of year. You can get the week, dot week, etc. So, so there are a bunch of different specific attributes you can extract out of a timestamp object. So let's just run this and see that we have made a data frame of a bunch of different columns related to dates and times. In addition to extracting features from dates like this, you can actually do subtraction between timestamp objects to determine how much time has transpired between different timestamps. So we'll give an example of doing that here. We're going to print one of the timestamps. We're going to print another one, and then we're going to print the subtraction of one from the other. And we'll just see that here we have a date that was in the fourth month of 1996. And we have another one that was in the fifth month, so May of 1996. And when we subtract this month from the one that occurred after it, we can see that it tells us 22 days passed between the later month and the earlier one. Now pandas includes a variety of more advanced date and time functionality beyond the basics that we just covered in this lesson, particularly for dealing with time series data, which consists of many periodic measurements over time. 
We're not going to cover all of that in this lesson, but I will leave a link to the pandas date time functionality page so that you could read more up on that kind of thing if you want to. So at this point in this guide, we have covered how to deal with text data, numeric data, and date data. So now we know how to deal with most of the types of data that you'll find in a table that you load into a pandas data frame. But sometimes in a data analysis project, you're going to have data spread across multiple different files or databases or tables, and you need some way to join those different data sets together into a single data set you can use for your analysis. So in the next lesson, we'll learn how to join or merge data from two different tables or data frames together. If you found this video useful, drop a like, hit subscribe, and I will see you again next time.